Hey guys, this is another video request. Some of you guys asked me, so Daniel, if Jesus is the only way to salvation, then how will God judge people that has never heard the gospel before? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. So let's get to it. Now just very quick, if it's your first time here on my channel, I'm Daniel Moritz and welcome to DLM Christian Lifestyle. Subscribe and also click that notification bell so you won't miss any of the next videos. Now, there's some Christians and also unbelievers that ask me this question of if Jesus is the only way to heaven, to salvation, then how does God judge those people who never heard about Jesus Christ, about the gospel? Is God not then being unfair? Well, first of all, remember, we humans, we're humans, right? We're imperfect, but God is God. He judges fairly, we judge unfairly. God is righteous and therefore He will judge everybody, every single person on earth with righteous judgment. 1 Peter 1 verse 17 says, God is one without partiality and judges according to each one's work. So how will God judge people who has never heard about Jesus? Well, if you read, you can clearly see that throughout the Bible, God will judge people based on the information that they had. And then, very importantly, how they reacted to that information. Now, Paul says in the beginning of Romans that people will be judged based on how they responded to God's law. What law? This is the law that God placed in us, meaning our conscious, that is telling us right from wrong. And then second, God will also judge us based on His general revelation in nature. Romans 2 verse 11 says, For there is no partiality with God. For as many as have sinned without law will also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law will be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law will be justified. For when Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do the things in the law. These, although not having the law, are a law to themselves. Now listen to this. Who show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and between themselves their thoughts accusing or else excusing them. In the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, now that is very clear and you know we as humans we are not perfect and we judge each other very quickly based on how we look act and talk and all different kinds of stuff we make assumptions based on our own subjective perceptions we can't see things objectively the way that god can we can't see what is really going on in a person's heart but god can god says i the lord search the heart I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. So that is how God will judge people, based on how they responded to the moral law that God has put in their hearts, their conscience, but then also God will judge them according to how he revealed himself to us in nature. Romans 1 verse 19 says, Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You know, if you clearly look at the complexities of the universe. You can clearly see that there is a designer, a high intelligence that created it all.
So we can clearly see God's revelation in nature. But now I'm going to tell you something that's very important. This does not mean that anyone can be saved apart from the work that Jesus Christ did on the cross. Now, what does that mean exactly? It means that God can apply the benefits of Jesus Christ's death and resurrection to someone without even their knowing, their conscious knowing of Jesus. For example, if there is such a person who has never heard about Jesus Christ or the gospel, if he or she looks at the world and believe there must be an amazing God, a great power that created all of this out of nothing. And if he gives himself to this God, thanking him for his life and everything that he sees and lives every day, and looking into his own heart and trying his best to obey God's moral law because he clearly knows what is right, what is wrong. So if he obeys his conscious, God's moral law, by doing good and not evil, then God might save such a person through the blood of Jesus Christ and by His grace, even if He has never heard the gospel. And this is similar to how God saved people in the Old Testament before Jesus was even crucified. Remember, it is only us who live in time, but God is not limited by time, space or matter. God is infinite, meaning self-existing without origin, omnipresent, everywhere, omnipotent. He is all-powerful, omniscient, all-knowing, wise, full of perfect, unchanging wisdom, self-sufficient. He has no needs, immutable. He never changes. He is faithful, infinitely, unchangingly true. He is good, kind and full of good will. Just, meaning right and perfect in all He does. He is merciful, meaning compassionate and kind, gracious, inclined to spare the guilty. Holy, which means pure and perfect and glorious, beautiful and great. And He is loving, meaning He unconditionally loves us. And even though God is all these amazing things, He gave us life. And He loves us as our real Father. And He just wants us to love Him back. But He doesn't force us. He doesn't force anyone. He gives all of us free choice. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. You know, sometimes we are so busy with the things of this world, but your life will pass in an instant. And the fact that God still gives you air in your lungs to breathe and live your everyday life means that God is not done with you yet. He is giving you time. Time to give your life to Him as Lord and Savior. And if you've already done it, if you're already a reborn Christian, then He's still giving you time because He has a plan and a purpose for your life. And you need to find out what that is. Now, if you want to know more about God and how to grow spiritually, then check out one of these videos and I'll see you there. And remember, God loves you and I love you too. Bye. Take my life in Consecrated Lord to Thee